Week 44 of my coronavirus log. Details and timestamps are below, and here's a general outline. Saturday, January 9th, just getting a warm up on the uh, treadmill, getting a run in. I've been pretty good about uh, exercise and diet and stuff like that. I'm down about 15 pounds. Still got a ways to go, but, uh, but trending in the right direction. Um, kind of a quiet day today, uh, which is nice. I uh, just got done doing a uh, Fontaine's DC watch party that they, uh, a group on Facebook did. And it showed uh, one of their performances from South by Southwest as well as a BBC performance that they did. God, I miss freaking live music. Um, tonight, going to watch the uh, Washington football team play in the playoffs. It's weird. I've been a Washington fan all my life, and they've been so bad for so long. Um, the part of me is like tried to make the decision to not be a Washington fan and be a Giants fan, which lines up with the rest of my sports fanship. But I just keep kind of coming back to it. it makes no goddamn sense. So, and uh, plus, you know, Giants are out. Yeah, okay. I keep wanting to say the Redskins, but the football team, Washington's in the playoffs, even though they've got a seven and nine record. The NFC East is just terrible. But we'll see how it goes. Um, what else? Getting ready to watch The Expanse, uh, even though it came out on Wednesday. I haven't watched it yet, so I'm going to watch it while I run. And then the game comes out at 8. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Oh, in the news, um, Trump has continued pressure to either force him to resign uh, or pressure in his cabinet. He's had a bunch of people resign from his cabinet post, which, one, is supposedly in protest, but also conveniently kind of gets them out of having to make any calls for, um, you know, invoking the 25th Amendment, uh, which is there's pressure to have him to do that, to have him removed from office. And it looks like the House is going to submit impeachment articles next week. So even though he's out after, you know, about 10 days from now, week from Wednesday, I think they're going to go through with impeachment. He's been blocked from permanently from Twitter. I, I don't know if it's permanent for the rest of them, but Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, basically all the different platforms for inciting violence he's been taken off, which is nuts. It's like, okay, you're not responsible enough to be on fucking Twitter, but you can still be the president of the, of the United States. That tells you something right there. Um, and also a lot of uh, his followers have been trying to go to Parler, which is, you know, like the MAGA equivalent of Facebook. And you've seen both Apple and Google take that platform off of their ability to, uh, you know, so now you, it's not available on their platform. So you know, a lot of pushback coming as a result of, uh, of Wednesday. Also worth noting, today's the 300th day I've been doing this freaking video, which is nuts. I can't believe it. And I've done it. I don't think I've missed any days. Fucking 300 days is a long time. I am looking forward to uh, to getting the vaccine and being done with this. I've kind of made the decision that once I get the vaccine and or vaccines, depending on which one I get, the you know I think I don't know if both of them have two shots or not. That's when I'm going to end this log. All right, Sunday, January 10th. Um, just relaxing today. Took the dog for a walk a couple of times. Um, Washington football team lost last night, which kind of sucks. But uh, it was interesting. They have this uh, quarterback named Heineke who has been in and out of the league. I guess he was out of the league, wasn't even playing football like two months ago. And um, he played for a bunch of different teams. But the, the uh, Washington team had had so many injuries that they ended up uh, pulling him in. And he actually played a hell of a game. Um, it was interesting, interesting to watch. I mean, for a guy who didn't even have a job, I was like, how is this guy not at least a backup somewhere? But, um, but yeah, so that stayed up watching that and then just been chilling out today. Monday, January 11th. So just finishing up the work day. Um, had my snowblower guy came and picked up my snowblower to repair it since it only goes in reverse. Uh, hopefully he'll get that done before we get any significant snow. Um, also in the news, um, continued fallout from last Wednesday. Looks like the House is going to move forward with articles of impeachment. They drew them up. Could vote on them as early as tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, there's also been all sorts of social media posts about uh, um, people that were the, the rioters and, and people that took part in the insurrection. They're now on terrorist no-fly lists. So uh, kind of 
somewhat funny articles. There's one this guy's freaking out. It's like, you're treating me like a black person. You treat me like a black person. Jesus Christ, the sense of entitlement is just ridiculous. Um, as well, I, my buddy sent me an article. There's an Olympic swimmer. This dude's six six. He, he swam in several Olympics wearing his Olympic jacket as part of the riot inside the Capitol. So he'll probably go to jail too. I don't know if these people just didn't think there'd be any consequences, um, you know. But I think they're going to get hung out to dry. The only question is going to be: Does the people that incited to the Ted Cruz, the Josh Hawley, so obviously Donald Trump? Are they going to get held accountable, or is it just the average Joes that kind of believe the hype um, going to go away? Um, switching gears in music, there's a band that I've liked, uh, Beach Slime, that I've seen a bunch of different times. I've actually got a, an autographed booklet of lyrics and poems autographed by all the members of the band, and they had this uh, great manager, just a sweetheart named Charlie, um, and it just came out that she's... Uh, me too, James Alex, the lead singer of um, of uh, Beach Slang, really a pretty harsh um, post about how abusive he was for years and stuff like that, and uh, and then this really long kind of rambling. James has suffered with mental illness and all sorts of stuff, so pretty pretty brutal stuff. And it looks like Beach Slang's over. It's interesting. I saw them at Riot Fest, and I'll show the video. You actually see. Um, Charlie come out on stage because she was always on stage. It was really kind of weird how, how involved she was while they were on stage. Uh, and then James has the, the crowd cheering. <laughs> Can we get a chant going for Charlie? She's probably the hardest working human being in rock and roll. Charlie! Charlie! they appear so that's sad news all around so hopefully um hopefully everybody gets the help they need and it's just too bad because they really made nice music and the uh the guitarist aurora i've had a serious crush on she's just so good and gorgeous and talented so i'm getting ready to get on the treadmill and i've got black dress socks on so there's my nikes with black socks so why am i cringing at wearing black socks to work out at Nobody's going to see me if I wasn't telling you guys, and nobody may see this anyway. I don't know. It's just weird. All right. Tuesday, January 12th. I'm going to keep it relatively short today. Two things. One, Elizabeth's shoe is freaking gorgeous and is still gorgeous. Um, I don't know how she came up. I think my neighbor posted something about her, and I'm like, God, I love Elizabeth's shoe. Um, and she was just in Amazon's The Boys. She's freaking seven years older than me. She's like 57 and still freaking gorgeous. Between the two of us, one of us is aged better than the other. I'll let you decide who. Um, secondly, I hate when I freaking end up taking my, um, I take my extra hangers and make sure I bring them down into uh, the laundry room so that they're there when I get clothes out. Um, however, I just did that and realized that I'm like, all right, I only wore this a little bit. I'm going to hang it back up. But I don't have any goddamn extra hangers now. I get it. Middle of a pandemic, a freaking um, insurrection, possible civil war. These are not really problems that go to the top of the list. But still, shit I got to deal with. Wednesday, January 13th. So the president got impeached again. Um, the House passed it along, uh, not just uh, the Democrats, but 10 Republicans as well. Crazy times. Now the question is what will happen next. It, it certainly won't go to the Senate in time for anything to be done. They don't reconvene until the 19th. The inauguration is on the 20th. McConnell certainly not going to call the Senate back before then. Um, so does the House send it over on the 20th? or well, We'll see what happens. And then can they get the two-thirds in the Senate they need to actually convict? And um, and then at this point, you know, after the 20th, he's not going to be the president anyway. But I still think he deserves to be impeached for what he did. But uh, Jesus, he impeached twice. He'll go down in history for sure. Jesus. Um, I'm doing my Wednesday night whiskey and vinyl tonight with uh, 
I'm going to play Erg and Music War, and I've been trying different setups as far as streaming on Zoom. I tried to figure out how to have the music from the turntable go out through my iPhone directly into Zoom, so it's not just, uh, you know, uh, music or excuse me, noise from the room, but uh, couldn't get it to work. Tried a couple of different setups. My buddy TJ helped me out. Even checked in with my buddy Jeff at the, the local radio station. He was like, yeah, I don't think it's possible. So plugged in a bunch of different stuff. Didn't work. What I did figure out is if I, if I leave my iPhone in there with the turntable just close to the speakers and then I move to another room, I'm going to do it from my office, you don't get the feedback loop. And you can hear it okay. We'll see how it goes. Now. Yeah, so far my uh, Wednesday night whiskey and vinyl is me sitting in my office listening to vinyl in my man cave across the hall with the door closed on Zoom instead of sitting in my $2 chair. It's just fucking me. So we'll see if anybody else joins. We'll see. Good idea, but you know what? Thursday, January 14th, just finishing up the workday. So did have some friends join my whiskey and vinyl, so it was not all me sitting here in my office listening to music as a, through Zoom in my uh, in my man cave. So uh, I think I'm going to give it another try next week. But uh, but uh, what the hell? Um, talked about the impeachment yesterday. Um, oh, There's always something in the news. COVID continues to be bad, but uh, but otherwise, just uh, finishing up the week. Looking forward to a long weekend, which is like shit. I'm not ready for a long weekend. Not that I don't enjoy having Monday off, but it's like you just almost want to spread them out. Um, Marvel is releasing WandaVision. Actually, while I was walking Sammy, watched like a live thing that they, they did promoting it. So won't end up watching that tonight only because I'm doing a movie night with my buddies and we're watching something about Mass Mocha, which is a nearby museum in North Adams, Mass. But, uh, but I'll probably watch it uh, Friday night or over the weekend, so... Um, that, same shit this now. is the part where I talk about music. I saw some sad news in consequence of sound. I talked about a, a Suspect 208, which is a band made up of a um, bunch of different famous musicians, uh, kids. Um, I think it's uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses, Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots, one of the guys from Suicidal Tendencies, I forget who the other one is. But uh, listen to them, it's not bad. I mean, they're all kids, they're all teenagers. But sadly, it looks like they just threw Noah Weiland, Scott Weiland of Stone Temple Pilot, the late Scott Weiland of uh, Stone Temple Pilots. They just tossed him out of the band for uh, drug abuse, which is just freaking so sad because that's exactly how his dad died and he was thrown out of STP for it. So hope the kid gets some help. So every year the music magazine NME does what they call the NME 100, uh, an essential list of emerging artists for the next year. So um, every year I try and check it out and uh, and listen to, to, to the artists that they've recommended. And sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. It depends on the genre. But they, they're nice enough to have done a Spotify playlist. And I'm excited because I always go through this and, 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 I, and I'm a huge nerd. I'll use uh, Excel or spreadsheets or whatever to go through and look at these. And in the past, I've always manually typed it in. And I actually found out there's something, there's a website called Exportify that you can actually export your playlist from Spotify into a... Uh, with a step in between. It comes out as a CSV, a comma separated uh, value file, and then you can import it into a spreadsheet. And it's crazy. It, it, it not only gives you the, here's the artist, here's the track, here's the album. It gives you the genre, it gives you the length, and then it gives you like a dozen different um, categories. Um, I'd have to look at them again. That must be the behind the scenes data and, and information that they use for their algorithms. So, uh, I'll have to do some kind of analysis to see, uh, see you know what the trends are, you know, given the different uh, categories, uh, and, and see if I can figure out my own taste. But what I did it, it, it use it for is uh, I went through, listened to the playlist, and I made my own playlist of songs that I liked. Ended up being a, I think it was like thirty six songs out of the one hundred, so about a third that I was like, okay, this is interesting, or I like it, or worth listening more to, um, and and I just did X's and O's as far as X's you're in, O you're out. Um, 
one of the trends is, and I'm seeing, is a lot of uh, continued uh, continued great scenes of uh, musicians coming out of um, coming out of Ireland, um, Australian, um, English. Not as many in here in North America, unfortunately. But uh, but I'll go through, and I'm going to touch base on some of these and share the music with you, and, and I'll share a, a, a my own playlist. I'll, I'll put both the NME one. And the uh, my shorter list uh, down in the description below if you want to check it out. All right, let's talk about some of the Irish uh, artists that are on this list. Uh, I'm going to start off with a uh, artist by the name of Smooth Boy Ezra. She's an 18 year old artist from uh, County Wicklow, about an hour south of Dublin, and she's had comparisons to like uh, female artists like Snail Mail, Phoebe Bridgers, Julian Baker, and I've always been a sucker for. Uh, female uh, singers with great voices and um, listen to her and she's no exception she's got a um, she's had about a dozen singles I think just under a dozen singles released since 2018 and the one I'm going to share here is called My Own Person um, and I think she's going to be coming out with a, a release of an EP Been rotating the same two outfits for three years now Waiting for some kind of inspiration to make me feel like I'm my own person. But buying new clothes just makes me feel down. Having new style calls me more attention and I don't feel like I'm my own person. I just feel like some other version of me. So hopefully you like that kind of a chill sound. Um, next up is a 23-year-old artist from Dublin by the name of Sierra Lindsay, and uh, she goes by the uh, the name Kinsey, and uh, it's just got such a strokes sound, just a great freaking guitar riffs, um, and she's got a song out there called Happiness Isn't a Fixed State. It's kind of scary, it's kind of sad. She's working on getting an EP out there, but uh, last but not least, probably my favorite of, of the uh, of the three, and one of the favorites on the NME list altogether. It's a band by the name of Sprints. It's a four piece again from Dublin. They just sound kick ass. I got a female lead singer by the name of Carla Chubb. Um, they got four singles out so far. I'm gonna play you the cheek. And um, they've had comparisons to like Fontaine's DC, which is freaking high praise indeed. So I hope I get a chance to catch them. I actually texted them on Instagram. It was like, love your shit. Hope to see you in North America. Um, and ordered their vinyl as well. So, so I'm looking forward to getting that in there. So, but uh, take a listen to the cheek. And they sound good. I'll tell you, one part of my process that's missing that I normally do when I'm doing this is, you know, I'll go through the, the make the playlist, I'll add them to my crazy spreadsheet, uh, I'll go out and find their social media and follow it, I'll follow them on Spotify, um, I'll check to see if they've got any vinyl and, and maybe pick up some of that. But one key part that I would normally do is, oh, let me check their tour schedule, see if they're coming nearby so I can catch them. And obviously that's not on the table right now, but hopefully it will be soon. Um, so just finish the Irish part. Bunch of uh, good music coming out of, out of Australia. And I've been tracking that, uh, listening to Triple J and following the Triple J Unearthed podcast on a weekly basis. 
And one of the NME artists, I won't share her song because I've done it previously, is a guy by the name of Ashwara. Indian born, uh, she's got a song called Psycho Hole that I finished, that I, I shared in, in a previous video. I'll put the link on here somewhere. I'll look it up and add it. Um, but uh, but you really like that song. It's not the song they highlighted. I like I like Psycho Hole better though than what they did share. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now is a um, artist by the name of Romero. It's a band that was inspired by horror director George Romero for their name. They're out of Melbourne. They're a five piece. They've got a great beat, kind of a surf punk kind of sound. Um, female lead singer, uh, a couple of brothers that are in the band. They've been around since 2018. Uh, they released a seven inch of this song, Honey, that I'm going to uh, share with you. I checked it out. It was sold out, I guess, immediately. I checked on eBay. There's nothing out there. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye out for. But take a listen to their single, Honey. All right, hopefully you like that. One of the things that cracks me up, you look at their picture and one of the guys is wearing a, you know, one of the blue shirts, a freaking New York Rangers hockey jersey. I don't think is of hockey being a real big sport uh, down in Australia, but who knows. So update to the Rangers thing. As I often do, I just shot a quick note just saying, hey, love your music, just discovered you. Congrats on the NME nod. Um, and they replied and we ended up chatting and I was like, what's up with the Rangers thing? I don't think of Australia as a hockey hotbed. And Justin, who's the bass player, and I think the guy wearing the jersey in the picture, said, hey, I worked with a Canadian guy, and he got me and Adam, who is the guitarist, hooked on the NHL on hockey. So now we're crazy freaking Rangers fans. So too freaking funny. Uh, next up is another artist out of Melbourne. The Melbourne scene just seems so freaking good. Um but it's an artist, young artist by the name of Dane, is I think how you say it. She's 18 years old. She's been uh, playing, I guess, in the hardcore scene in Melbourne since she was 13. Uh, of Filipino descent, which I only note, note that because it also makes me think of Biba Doobie out of the UK, even though they're completely different hemispheres. Uh, but this sound, it's a, it's a song by the name My Way Out. It's much more chill, kind of emo. Um, and I liked it. Give it a listen. <laughs> Yeah, so kind of a chill sound, um, a little different sound than the, the guitar-heavy stuff that I usually listen to. Um, so that's it for the Australian band. It's going to switch to stuff coming out of the UK now, uh, starting with also kind of a different sound. band by the name of Bad Boy Chiller Crew. Um, now, this is a three-piece out of Bradford, UK, that started off by uploading, I guess, like prank videos onto YouTube, just kind of uh, comedy stuff, kind of as a joke. And eventually started making music. Uh, they go by BBCC uh, as an abbreviation. Um, and actually, uh, they just released their debut album in September called Full Whack No Breaks. I can hear these guys being like on the soundtrack of a Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, here's their song, 450. Big 450, pop it and twist it. Watch when it kicks it. Cops are resisting, boys are resisting. Drop it and lift it. Cost of my misfit. Red light, risk it. Bitch of my charver. Big goose parker. All black clover. All black towel. Come in with a mask on. Come in for the law. Come in for the jackpot. I'ma pull up on that big 450. Pop it and twist it. Watch when it kicks it. Cops are resisting, boys are resisting. Drop it and lift it. Cost of my misfit. Red light, risk it. Bitch of my charver. Big goose parker. All black clover. All black towel. Come in with a mask on. Come in for the law. Come in for the jackpot. 
Yeah, so definitely different than the normal genre I listen to, but uh, I don't know, they kind of have a Beastie Boys kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, sense about them to me. Worth keeping an eye on. Uh, next up is a band called The Goa Express and a song called Be My Friend. Uh, these guys are kind of a garage punk, garage rock sound. Um, they're actually be working with a producer that's worked with Arctic Monkeys and Aussie band Amelia Sniffers, who I saw down in Brooklyn. They're freaking amazing. So, but here's Be My Friend. So pretty good sound. Uh, next up and last of the UK is a band called Kid Capacci. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but uh, they're a four piece from Hastings, UK. And um, they've been around since 2013. They've got a sound kind of like Queens of the Stone Age, maybe a little bit like Idols. Um, and it's a song called Working Man's Town. Um, they've got a couple of EPs out and a album coming up, I guess in February. Um, called This Time Next Year. I might take a look at getting the vinyl, but take a listen to Working Man's Town. And that's it for now. Um, there's a sample of the artists that I liked that NME named the emerging artists for 2021. Uh, more on the playlist if you want to check it out. So since this was kind of long, uh, no quarantine vinyl this week. Just as an FYI, I've created Spotify playlists for both this week's music as well as all the quarantine vinyl that I've listened to. Uh, it's in the description below. What did Craig get from Amazon? All right, so this is vinyl shocker um but it's from a movie that i watched the shit out of as a kid in high school called erg a music war it's a compilation um probably mid 80s i'd have to look at what the date is on we'll see here in a second when we open it of all sorts of alternative and punk music from uh high school when i was in high school and this introduced me to so much freaking great music. And I was talking about it with my buddy TJ and a bunch of guys, my high school buddies. And I was like, shit, I gotta go buy this. So I ended up pulling the trigger and finding it on uh, eBay. So yeah, you can see the all the different bands. Let me see what the, see if I can see what year it is. 19, God, 1981. Jeez, I thought it was later than that, so it was actually earlier. I was, I would have been watching it probably 1985, 86. Wait, you look at this. I mean, it was, it was the who's who of alternative. And, and you don't think of the police and the go-go's as alternative, but this, they were then. That's how they started out. XTC, OMD, Devo, X, God, Gang of Four, Parubu. Boingo, Boingo. I remember Gary Newman. He's actually coming out with something new I just read in Consequence of Sound. The Cramps. Jesus Christ, they were freaking nuts. What the hell was the damn... I can picture the lead singer um, wearing these freaking crazy leather pants. The Flesh Tones I've seen and met. I saw them a couple years ago again. Jules Hahn. He's got his. He's got a show now. Seal Pulse. Joan Jett. Jesus so excited to listen to this. Get this out the right way. Man, I love this insert. You've got all the uh, all the bands and stuff in here. And IRS, what a great label. So we'll go through this and I'll figure out, I'll pick a couple of different songs to play from here. Um, because they're all live recordings, so either I'll play it off the um, off the album itself, or I don't know if they have them on uh, Spotify or not. All right, here's Sammy to help me open this. 
looking for, hello, do you want some attention? <laughs> All right, so I guess we are not gonna open this right now. All right, so somebody needed some loving and some snuggles. Huh, Sammy? I know. Let's try this again. This should be an iPad stand. I had one that was um, just kind of like a little golden bookmark kind of thing, but watch out, Sammy. But uh, I haven't been able to find it for months. So I finally am. Wait, this is certainly not what I ordered. Yeah, I did not order this. That's weird. So Amazon's usually pretty good. This is what they actually sent. It's like some $15 surprise toy thing. Um, so they're, they're sending me a refund. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking return this. I'm just going to throw it out or maybe I'll see if the neighbor wants it for their kids or something like that. But, uh, and then, so they sent me a refund and I'm going to reorder it. I could have raised the stink and have them give me a, you know, a, a you know, a credit or something like that. But I just reorder the thing. It'll be here on Monday. All I want is a freaking uh, a stand for my tablet, which I, I used to have one. I don't know where the hell it went, but, um, oh, well. This is the biggest challenge I have. I can live. Nice with. surprise from my buddy TJ. A collection of coasters that he'd found and set aside for me, and then actually lost them and just found them again. There's a dog barking at something outside, but very nice. Thank you. The Amazon package. I'm pretty sure this is my Lincoln Project um, T-shirt, which I don't know if it is official Lincoln Project merchandise because their site's all sold out. But let's open it. Yeah, there we go. Kind of a badass uh, variant of the Lincoln Project t-shirt. All right, I'm not sure what this vinyl is. Coming from Austin, Texas. Awesome merchandise. Oh, nice. Rat Boys. I just ordered this, actually. My uh, buddy Christy was just telling me about these guys and uh, gave them a listen, and they were freaking phenomenal. This came pretty quick. So this is one of the um, bands I recommended last week during my video that it was highlighted as one of the local Chicago bands by the guys from Sound Opinions. And I shared the song Look To. So you can check that out last week. All right, and Amazon package. This might be the replacement uh, that I ordered on my iPad. Yep, this is what it is. So this time the stand is really a stand and not some kind of crazy toy. So, so it's not serious. We'll have to see how this works. Spare part. What the hell spare parts are there for this thing? Let's look here. Let's look in here and see. Oh, it must be just little, um, little grippers. Yeah, nothing fancy. Should work, though. All right, this should be, I think it's a pair of sweatpants on Amazon. Yes. So I've been working out and it gets a little cold in the shorts. So I'm like, I need a pair of sweats. I realize I don't have any freaking sweatpants anymore. And this I'm always psyched to get. It cracks me up. The fabulous Craig McAvoy here. That uh, this is probably pint sized punk fanzines that are um, Christmas special. So I I order, did I order two? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. These are fun. I, I like that I've got the full collection too since issue number one. Oh, nice. And they actually put in a um, nice. That is phenomenal. 
freaking uh, a Christmas card from Arlo, the 10-year-old who is the pint-sized punk. All right, this should be HDMI cables and connectors because I'm trying to get it so I can plug my laptop in. Is this just what it is? Weird packaging. Should be a 10 foot long HDMI cable. Yes, that's what it looks like it is. And then this should just be a connector. Because what I'm doing is making it so I can plug in my laptop sitting in the $2 chair in my man cave. There we go, and there's three of these. So, so this should go. There we go. So what I want to do, let me take this off, is behind that boom box, and you can actually see it, there's an HDMI cable that I can plug my laptop in and watch stuff from my laptop on the big screen TV, and I want to be able to work on my laptop from there, from the $2 chair. So that's what this will do. Friday, January 15th. It's been a great day so far. Uh, work had a briefing with leadership that went really well, and, and one of my team got the brief, and, and, and she came across really well, so I was pleased with that. Um, always good when your team gets it to look good. Never mind yourself. You want to, you want your team to look good, because if, if you take care of them, they take care of you. Um, secondly, the Foo Fighters announced they're playing uh, Inauguration, and they're one of my favorite bands, and get to celebrate Trump leaving, which I think is a good thing. And lastly, the Yankees just re-signed DJ LeMayhew. Uh, six years, 90 million. I thought it would be for fewer years, but it was you know, it ended up getting the average annual value down, so it doesn't hurt the salary cap as well. And I was just listening to John Boy do a, um, a Talking Yanks podcast, and it makes sense. He's like, look, at, if you were, you're you going to get four good years out of him, um, and the, the remaining two, if you were to sign up for four years, 90 million, that would be about market value. So... Um, doing six years, 90 million at 15 per, it's actually a good deal. It gives them more flexibility, especially this year to maybe go out and re-sign Tanaka or another pitcher. So, but, uh, good Friday. I hope everybody's safe and well. COVID's still crazy. I just talked to another neighbor and, 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 and somebody in their family's got it. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot of bad shit going on, but today's one of the uh, good days and I'll take it.